Electric vehicles have a ton of benefits over gas and diesel-powered cars and trucks, but these advantages often do not come cheap. Up next, 10 unexpected EV expenses you need to be aware of. Welcome to another episode of EV Basics, where we demystify the world of electric vehicles. Despite their myriad advantages, EVs do have their downsides, and unexpected expenses can really surprise new owners. The first one to be aware of really isn't a shock, I mean, at least if you can do a little research or read a window sticker, but EVs are often much pricier to buy than comparable gas-powered vehicles, and sometimes a lot more. This is largely because the technology is still relatively new, and battery packs cost a fortune. Tesla has been lowering prices recently, as has GM with the Bolt EV and EUV models, but many electrics are still extraordinarily expensive, like the Ford F-150 Lightning, for instance. The Workaday XLT model with the long-range battery starts around $81,000, including delivery fees. Now, it's a nice truck, but that's insane. In comparison, a stripped-down XLT gas model with four-wheel drive is about 27 grand less. Of course, federal tax credits soften the blow purchasing a new EV may have on your finances. Getting $7,500 back from the government can bring a lot of electric vehicles within reach of average drivers, but you've got to be judicious. Not every EV is eligible for these incentives, so make sure to do your homework. Consult your tax advisor if you have any questions about potential credits, because realizing you aren't going to get the full or even partial rebate is a rude awakening come tax time. Next, EV registration fees are often higher than they are for conventional vehicles, so budget accordingly when it's time to renew your plates. Since EVs run on electricity, not fuel, states don't make any money from the gas tax for maintaining roads, which is why certain fees are higher. A double whammy that goes hand in glove with increased registration fees, EVs often cost more to insure as well. The reason for this is because they tend to be more expensive to purchase than comparable gas-powered vehicles, the technology is newer and therefore pricier, and if a battery gets damaged in a crash, it can cost a fortune to replace. You don't want to be driving around with a dented, punctured, or otherwise beat-up pack because that is a recipe for trouble like a big old fire. Speaking of damage, electric vehicles can cost more to repair, and for the same reasons insurance is pricier. Heaven forbid you need to replace a battery and it's not covered under warranty or by your policy. The Volkswagen ID.4's pack, for instance, has a dealer price of $13,798.45. You think that's a lot? (laughs) The Ford Parts website lists a replacement lightning battery at up to 47 grand. Whose kids need to go to college? Just buy a replacement battery. Now, critics of EVs hammer this point home again and again that batteries cost so much to replace. And they're right. But what they often neglect to mention is that replacing gas engines isn't cheap either. And it looks like a fully dressed, ready to run 5 liter V8 for an F-150 pickup will cost you about 15 grand. So only an arm, while the Lightning's battery goes for an arm, and a leg, and your firstborn child. Going forward, the replacement costs for EV batteries will almost certainly drop as more companies develop solutions. Similarly, many drivers don't buy a new engine if theirs fails, they get a used or remanufactured unit instead. The same is happening in the electric vehicle world. In fact, some refurbished packs are already available for more common EVs, such as Teslas or the Nissan LEAF. But now I've got to take a moment to thank our friends at Ytricity, the sponsor of this video. When it comes to wireless electric vehicle charging, all you need to know is one word, and that's Ytricity. Wireless charging brings a whole new level of convenience to the EV ownership experience by eliminating bulky cables and clunky connectors. Just park your vehicle and it starts absorbing energy automatically. Electricity technology will even support bi-directional and vehicle-to-grid charging so your EV can seamlessly feed electricity into your home or even the broader power network if there's an outage. Wireless EV charging by Ytricity is easy 
elegant, and just as efficient as level two charging with a cable. So for more information, scan the on-screen QR code or hit the link in the description box below. Now, if you are old fashioned and don't have a Wytricity wireless charger, you'll almost certainly want a conventional 240 volt level two charger installed in your garage or carport, another EV expense. Yes, the charger itself costs money, but they're usually not that pricey. What could really cost you though, is the installation. Depending on your situation, you may have to run a new electrical line out to where you want to put the charger, and you may even have to upgrade your service panel, which could cost thousands of dollars, so be aware of that. Next, if you own an EV budget, a little extra money for tires. Thanks to their heavier curb weights and the instant torque their motors provide, electric vehicles put much more strain on tires, which wears them out faster. EVs also typically run special tires to improve efficiency, range, and NVH, so be aware of that, as replacement rubber can be more expensive as well. For a lot of drivers, another unexpected EV expense is resale value. When you go to trade in or sell your electric ride, you may find out it's not worth as much as you expected. Now, this was a bigger issue a few years ago, but as technology improves, people get more familiar with EVs, and the zeitgeist evolves, it's becoming less of a problem. If you plan on making long distance drives in an electric, you'll almost certainly have to DC fast charge. And while this is usually significantly cheaper than buying gas or diesel, it's still pricier than juicing up at home, sometimes by a lot. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, in January of 2023, the average cost per kilowatt hour of residential electricity in the U.S. was 15.47 cents. But here in Michigan, it's just about 18 cents. The Electrify America DC fast charger we often use when gathering data for our EV Pulse charging challenge videos bilks drivers for 48 cents per kilowatt hour, though Pass Plus members who pay a $4 monthly fee do get it for just 36 cents. So if you were to completely replenish a Hyundai Ioniq 5 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, it would cost about $14 to do it at home. Use an EA DC fast charger instead, and you could be shelling out more than $37, if you're not a member, of course. These elevated prices are unfortunate, but they do make sense. You're paying for speed and convenience, plus investors need to make back the money they shelled out to install the charger, which can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. And finally, one unexpected expense of owning an EV is time. That is, the time it takes to charge. Whether you're replenishing the battery at home or juicing up at a DC fast charger, it's never as quick as filling a fuel tank. The Ionic 5 I mentioned earlier can go from 10 to 80% in just 18 minutes and incredible performance, but that's still way longer than gassing up, say, a comparable Santa Fe SUV. Time spent waiting in the grocery store parking lot as your EV charges is time that could be spent doing more productive things, so take that into consideration. Okay, so I basically outlined most of the downsides to EV ownership, but I do not want to deter you from buying one of these vehicles. They have real and significant advantages over gas and diesel powered cars and trucks. Electrics are much cheaper to operate. You'll save a lot of money compared to buying fuel and their maintenance costs are appreciably lower as well. And those two points can offset many of the unexpected expenses covered in this video. Aside from those points, EVs offer strong performance. They're smooth and nearly silent, have zero tailpipe emissions, are far better for the environment, and electrics often come with the latest and greatest features. So if you love new tech, they're really the only way to go. And speaking of going, I'm getting out of here, but next, watch this EV Basics episode where I explain whether you need a level two charger at home. The short answer is no, but also definitely yes. So click over here for the full story.